Welcome to Tech Photo Blog. This is episode number eight. This week I'm going to talk about trigger voltages for flashes. Uh, so the way a uh, flash is triggered is it has um, two, at least two pins. Modern like TTL flashes have a lot more, but um, the older flashes had two different pins, and one of those would output a voltage, and the other one would be the the common uh, pin. And basically, when the circuit was completed between those pins, uh, the flash would be triggered. So different flashes will use different trigger voltages. Uh, this old Vivitar flash uh, has a very high trigger voltage, um, way over 100 volts. And that can actually damage a lot of modern cameras. And, you know, if you look in your user guide, they'll say don't use high voltage flashes with, with this camera. Um, it could damage the flash or it won't function or damage the camera or it won't function properly with the camera. Um, so make sure you, you, you know, you're careful about that. Definitely don't want to uh, damage your camera. Uh, he here are a couple more modern flashes that use much lower trigger voltages. Um, this is a Canon. This is an off name one from uh, China. I've used both of these with the camera axe as well. And these are safe on the camera axe. Uh, with the camera axe, I can say that it, it's safe up to 35 volts. So if you go higher than 35 volts, you may damage a chip in the uh, camera axe. I actually put a protection chip in there called an opto-isolator uh, so that you can't damage your camera if you accidentally plug a high voltage flash into the camera axe. But you, you could damage the uh, camera axe and uh, usually all you have to do is replace a a 50 cent chip and I'll actually uh, go into that in a little bit. Now I'll demonstrate how to measure the actual trigger voltages for your flashes. Uh, all you need is a multimeter of some sort like this to measure the voltage and set it to DC voltage. And then I have the, a, a hot shoe for my flash so that I can uh, measure the, the voltage across those two terminals more easily without actually touch, touching the terminals on the flash. I plug that in. This is the high voltage Vivitar and you can see that you know just sitting there it was sitting at 136 volts and when I turn it on it'll go to an even higher voltage so um, yeah it's it's over 200 volts now and it's um, now ready for trigger it says but it's the voltage is still climbing. I think it'll stabilize around there so that's 250 260 volts that's a lot more than the camera axe can handle so you shouldn't use this kind of a flash directly with the camera axe you'd want to put some kind of a, a voltage limiting circuit between the camera axe and this flash and I'll, I'll discuss how to do that maybe in a future blog but um, let's take a look at the Canon flash So it reads zero volts until I turn it on. And this one's 4.5 volts. So that's perfectly safe. Like I said, anything up to 35 volts on the camera axis is safe. Um, obviously, this Canon flash is safe for all Canon cameras. So as long as you stay, you know, around 4.5 or less volts, you know you're safe on Canon. But uh, most of them can go a bit higher than that. So now let's say you accidentally plug that Vivitar flash with its 250 volts um, DC flowing through this camera flash port. Uh, I mentioned before that the camera axe is only designed for 35 volts. Uh, the nice thing about the camera axe is I designed it with the idea that maybe somebody would accidentally do that and, and damage the camera axe. So I made it really easy to fix. All you do is pop open the camera axe and there's this chip here labeled LTV847 and that's an opto isolator chip that's what can handle up to 35 volts and basically if you plug something else that's much higher hundreds of volts this chip will protect the rest of the camera axe along with um, any camera or anything else that might be plugged into the camera axe so all you need to do is use a little screwdriver and pop that chip out and then you can pop in a replacement the chips, you know, 50 cents to a dollar. Uh, shipping will cost you more. I'll, I'll put a link in um, the show notes uh, for this chip just in case somebody's uh, watching this video and has accidentally damaged their camera axe. After you replace that chip, 
uh, it should be working fine again. Thanks for watching.